everybody, Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make a double diamond fold card. So here it is in the envelopes. This is a 6 by 6 envelope, fits in nicely. And then when I take it out, this is the card. So double diamond fold card. Now, lots of people make them this way around, so you probably may be more familiar with that style. But there are also some floating around like this. I have made this style before but I haven't shared it. And I was recently inspired again with somebody, I can't remember who it was, but they shared it on the Trimcraft blog um, website. So I always do encourage, go over and have a look at their website because it's full of inspiration. Um, and yeah, I really, really love the style. So there it is, all folds very flat, you can see there. And then like I said, just open it up and then it just stands nicely, kind of keep it in that, you want that kind of, I guess, about an inch, whatever it is there, Make sure you have that at the back, obviously, to make it stand. But that's the profile. That's how it looks when it's stood up on the mantel, sideboard, and so on. And then I finish the top here with a rosette. And this Let's Fiesta is part of the um, pack that I'm going to show you in a moment. Um, but I just love these colours. You can see there the paper that I've used has got a glitter on it. So it's got a real shine shimmer to it. And yeah, there's lots going on to this. It's really decorated, very simple. I've, ri I've literally just used the folds in the card, really, and just made them kind of pop. And then just put that simple rosette on the front. On the back, you've got a nice area here to write your message. And I've just stamped it with happy birthday. And yeah, folds, like I said, nice and flat back into your six by six envelope. If you want to make the envelope, I'll share the links to how to make envelopes. But for this particular one, for six by six, using the envelope punch board, you just follow the six by six here and you need a piece of paper that is nine and a half by nine and a half with your first punched and score line at four and three quarters. But like I said, revert to the little bit that'll pop up here and um, that'll tell you how to do that. Okay, so onto the card. Let me bring over everything. So let's make sure I'm all in, there we go. So where's that little bit of sunshine coming from? See it there? I've got something popping through on my window. And ah, there we go, got rid of it. Right. So I've already done my rosette. Again, I'll share a little pop-up to how to make rosettes. Um, very easy to do, but I've just done all that off camera. And that's all my bits there that I'll go through. So the cardstock again, it's the Paper Mania, the capsule, assorted colossal colours, 75, 12 by 12. All right, I'll share all those links. So this is the paper pack. I love this, the Fiesta Fever. I've been using it a lot lately, and I have used this time the sheets here that you get with all these kind of um, ephemera, um, toppers, die cuts, all that kind of stuff, whatever they're called. But I've just cut out the this one here and that's what I've used with a die cut for the Let's Fiesta. And then the paper I've used is this one here. Now it actually says Grazias on it, which obviously is thank you. Um, so it's perfect for a thank you card, but I just covered on the card that I made here. It actually said Grazias right underneath where I put the rosette but nowhere else now on the card. So I was able to use it for other things as well. So if you do have this paper pack, just you know, think of other ways that you can use it. Just I just covered it up so it worked for other themed cards and not just thank you. And then the one that I'm using today is leftover from this one here, which I used for the big bow clutch bag. Um, and that's with the kind of like trim on the other side there. Okay, but again, all links for that will be shared. Okay, so to make the card, you need one piece of 12 by 6 cardstock. I'm using this lovely green today from that pack. And basically, you just want to score at three, which is that way, I've done it, at three, four and a half, seven and a half, and nine. Okay, and I'm going to do some extra bits in a minute. Then you're going to need for the inside and for the um, front mat, you need for the back a white piece and write your message on. Uh, so that's two and three quarters by five and three quarters. And then you want that same size again in pattern paper for the front of your card, which again, obviously two and three quarters by five and three quarters. So one patterned and one with the plain white there. Then you'll need two pieces of two and five eighths of an inch by five and a half. And this is going to be to make the diamond layers. If I keep this out rather than keep putting it away, I can revert to it. These ones here, these mats, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to get that shape. It's very easy to do. So two pieces of that size, pop that one there. And then you need four pieces of one and one eighth of an inch by two and three eighths of an inch. And I've used white again, and that's gonna to be to get these 
triangles here. And again, I will show you how to do that. So let's get that out of the way, get rid of the scoreboard. Okay, so with this piece here, grab a ruler. And basically what you want to do is along, so you've got your three inch score line and your four and a half on this side. Between the edge here and your three and a half, sorry, your three, you just want to put a marker at one and a half. And again on the bottom here, so just one and a half. And then at this end here, so the very last score line that you scored, this one here, okay. Again, just mark one and a half on your ruler, top and bottom. And then rotate it on this last score line here that you've got. You want to mark halfway, so three, just with a pencil. And then on the very end here, with a pencil. And then down this very end here, three inches. And then that last score line there, three inches. Okay, so basically all you're doing is the, the first kind of larger re rectangle here and the larger rectangle at this end. You're just marking the halfway point on all four sides of it, here and here. Okay, then what you want to do is on the outer side, so this outer side and this outer side, we're going to do pencil marks and this is going to be our cut lines. You just want to join that marker to the side marker and again that one. Make sure you get them pretty lined up because you are going to be cutting them and it's going to create your nice diamond shape. So you're going to be cutting this shape here. That's that one. And then again this end here like that. Okay, so you can just see what I've done. Pencil mark there and there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pencil my lines just so that you can see what I'm doing. So you don't need to do this or you can if it will help make it easier for you. But I'm going to pencil them in I can rub these out afterwards. I think I've got a blunt pencil, but I think it will just help when I explain the next part. Okay, so hopefully now, although it just looks more shiny, but <laughs> there's pencil marks there. You can really see the lines anyway. So what we're going to do, be doing now is that's this kind of three inch little marker that you've done here with your pencil halfway down your two outer score lines. You want to, I'm going to draw it first, but you're going to score from that line to the middle panel. So this is the middle panel. That's where we've done that three inch halfway mark on the four points of this last one. You want to score from there up to here. Okay. And then we're going to score from there down to there. But I'm going to do it all in pencil and I'm going to score it off camera just because I think the pencil is going to show you. So that where I'm doing pencil is where you're going to score. Then you're also going to go from that middle point to there, and then the middle point to there. Okay, so remember this is cut. You're going to cut this line here and here, so kind of ignore that. But this big cross here and big cross there, you're going to score. So you can actually go right across, can't you? You don't have to go from the middle. You can just go score right the way through. So you're going from that top um, right hand side of this middle panel all the way down to this point here. So you're forming this diamond shape. And then again from that one across to that one. All right. Make sure you always keep your middle panel with nothing going on. And I think if you kind of keep that in your mind then you know that you're going to be getting this and this side right. So again here there's that middle point, that three inch one. So then I'm going to go from the top of this one right across all the way down. Remember you're going to score it but you can see now I've gone from the top there again of that middle panel and gone right the way across down to here. And then again this one right the way across and again all the way down. So now we've got a cross and a diamond and that's what you want to have. So if I hold that there, there we go, you can see you want to have your one, two, three, four lines and then you will have this diamond shape which if you've done it all in pencil first like I've just shown you now then fine but if not you will have this side of it will be scored, this side we're going to be cutting 
and then you want to have this big cross here and here. Okay, so hopefully I've explained that. So what we do first before we burnish it is we will cut the edges. So really, really neatly, you just want to go along. Don't worry if there's any pencil showing because you can just rub it out, but just go and very neatly cut from the corner up like so. Again. And then this one here. Okay, so that is now the shape that you want. You've got diamonds on your left and right, big cross, and then these four score lines here. And again, that centerpiece has always got nothing in it. You can see the score lines. Okay, so again, hopefully this is all making sense. So now I'm going to go ahead and just um, score. I'm going to rub the pencil out first because if you score over pencil, sometimes it's harder to rub it out, but um, you can still do it. But I'm going to go and just get those score lines finished because obviously I didn't do them. Okay, so now I have scored everything. So what you want to do first of all is on your middle piece, you're going to just burnish your main score lines there on the left and the right so you've created mountain folds. Okay, so that's what we want to have first of all, folded down. Okay, then what we're going to do is again form another mountain fold with those ones. So again, on that side there, like so. And then all the other folds are going to be valley folds. Okay, so you want to just go right across the diagonal there across those two and then again across that one okay and already you can see it just straight away falls into its shape okay so you get your folds right it's very very easy so again they were mountains so now these are valleys fold them up that way and that way and there again straight away it just falls into place like so okay it just happens like magic, it just does it for you. <laughs> so flip it over and grab your bone folder and just kind of help work in those score lines. Just pop your bone folder underneath and it will just, and along your main straight ones there and those ones there, and it will just help keep that all together. You want it to have enough pop that it kind of still lifts when you you know, it comes out of the envelope. Like so. And there it is. Stand it up. It's all ready now to decorate. Okay, let's pop that to one side. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is get these pieces stuck down. So I've got that one there. So that's my front mat that's going to go on the front. And I've got my one with my message that's going to go on the back. So I'm going to go and stick them both down. When you go to stick it down, just open up the card and then you can lie it down and get it nice and straight and it just makes it easier to decorate, like so. Okay, so that's all stuck down and there's the back done as well. So next we want to do these larger diamonds over on each side there. So that's when I told you you needed a piece that was five and five eighths, and two and five eighths of an inch by five and a half. Okay, so what you want to do is flip it over and you just want to find the halfway mark on all four sides. So along the five and a half, you want to mark at two and three quarters. Okay, so just put a pencil mark along the long side there and up here again, two and three quarters. Okay, it's your halfway. And then along the short sides, it's kind of a funny one because it's an odd number to start with, so it's two and five eighths. So the halfway is one, and it's in between one and a quarter and one and three eighths. So just put a little pencil mark between those two markers. So if we break it down, you're actually score and um, putting a marker at one, two, three, four, five sixteenths of an inch. But just find that halfway mark, okay? It's not going to make too much of a difference if it's slightly off overall because you can kind of move this a little bit so then you'll have your four points and then you just want to join them up do this all on the back because it doesn't matter you don't have to worry about rubbing out any pencil and just create that diamond shape so I'm just scoring each side 
um, marking each side and then just joining them together to give me my diamond shape. Okay, so the halfway, the short sides, put a little pencil mark and then halfway your long sides and just join those pencil marks up. And then when you've done that, you just want to cut it out. Okay, so now you've got your two diamond shapes. So they will be stuck down there. Now, where you've cut off your pieces, these bits here will fit in here. But what you will need to do is line it up with a nice border. So I'm just pulling the point away from the center here. And then you want to cut off the flat edge. So now if I cut off about, I'd say that's about a quarter of an inch, trim it off. You will now have that to fit in these pieces here. So if you want to have the same pattern covered on all of your pieces and save on card, then that is what you can do. So now you will see that that sits in there. You've got a nice green border. And then the next one, you could have, um, you've got to work it out because obviously they all change. So that one would go down over here. This one would go down here. And this one would go up here. And then the next ones you cut, you would have to cut the right way. Okay, because otherwise you'd have the reverse, but it does save you a little bit of card if you want to do it that way. However, I'm doing mine in white because I just liked, I thought the white really kind of showed the shape of this card. The pattern tends to get lost and you kind of lose the design. Keep it blocked white and you really do show it off. So that's when I said that you needed these four pieces here, which were one and one eighth of an inch by two and three eighths of an inch. And with those four pieces, if you want to do a pencil mark, you can. Let me just show you. You will go from, it doesn't matter which side, but go from the, for this, in this instance, I'm going to go bottom left to the top right and just do a pencil mark like so. Okay, and then just cut it in half. And then to use the white as well, then you can just flip it over because you will need to flip some of them over so you get them in the other orientation to fit in those shapes. So by cutting that now, I have all the other ones so I've cut those other three pieces that I had because you needed four so now I've got all these pieces and they will fit perfectly just like I showed you with the other ones in every single one of these one two three four five six seven eight triangles some of them you have to flip over until you get them in the right way so those ones are going to be up there and then that one there 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 and there and those there okay so that is what you have so now I'm going to go and get them all stuck down I'm going to use my wet glue so I've got a bit of wiggle room um, and I will be back okay so that is now all stuck down you can see how lovely it looks with that green frame that white just really makes it pop and really just shows that lovely design now you can also decorate here I haven't, I like to just show the green. And what you would do is cut another piece of card or paper this size, do the diamond exactly the same, and then just cut the diamond in half from top to bottom, and then put one side there and one side there. It'd be exactly the same. Okay, but that's now what I've got. So when I fold that all in, so put it back into its kind of form so it knows where to go, and look, you can really see that shape, and I think it looks fab. So now all that's left to do is finish it off with the rosette which I'm popping in the middle there. I've used the same um, navy, I had it scrap and I do try to use it all up especially when I'm working with the same kind of paper packs that way I know everything's matching. So it is the same as that one. I'm just going to add some hot glue just in the centre there. Obviously you can decorate this however you want but I do love a rosette. I think they kind of just finish it. You don't have to do much at all when you add a rosette, it's kind of done. Quick ways quick ways to decorate. And there you have it. One very lovely double diamond fold card. So there you have it. Stand that one up and they do. It has a lovely profile. Like I said, that's how it looks when it's stood up. So there's my two. So I hope you like this one. Pretty quick, pretty straightforward. Just a few little angles you've got to get right there, but hopefully I explained it well. I'd love to see them. Please keep sharing over on the Mixed Up Crafters Facebook group. It has evolved very quickly and you are all so lovely to each other over there. So please come and join in. It's been lovely and we'll continue to do so. Um, until next time, if you've enjoyed today's tutorial, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more. Thanks for watching, bye.